Welcome back. For over 260 years, historians and scientists have been puzzling over a library of classical Greek and Roman scroll scrolls. The texts were preserved in a villa after the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, but they're so delicate that any attempts to unroll them have only done damage. Now researchers may have figured out how to discover their secrets. We're joined now by AUT Professor Steve Pointing. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. So what's the solution to reading these ancient scrolls? Well, the solution, in, in a nutshell, is something called X-ray tomography. Um, but perhaps we ought to just backtrack a little bit. Um, these scrolls were, were basically preserved in this massive ash deposit from Mount Vesuvius. It's the same eruption that buried Pompeii. But the ash was very hot, about 300 degrees centigrade. So the scrolls were essentially turned almost to charcoal. So the idea of reading anything on them or un unraveling them um, was, was almost, you know, not, not, not considered. Um, however, with this technique, which is used in, in medicine, it's essentially the same as a normal X-ray. Uh, you know, you go to the doctor and you get a dark and light patches which reflect the, the passage of X-rays through your tissues and bones. But with this method called X-ray tomography, it's a three-dimensional method. So it not only measures the passage of X-rays, but also how they distort the path of travel through an object due to different thicknesses. So in this case, what the scientists in Italy did was they applied this method to the scrolls and they um, were able to discern very tiny variations in the thickness of the papyrus. Now, what they didn't do was detect the writing itself, but actually the indentations that the scribe had made when he made the original, uh, or did the original writing on, on the papyrus. And in this way, I think they've managed to discern so far 24 letters. Um, they've had much more success in identifying letters that had curved characters because papyrus itself, as you know, is a, a woven mat of leaves in effect and has many uh, straight lines and imperfections in, 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 in straight lines. So straight letters were harder to discern, but many round letters. And what they've managed to work out just from those 24 letters is that this is a work of a Greek philosopher called Philodemus who uh, actually proposed a, a lifestyle of, of excess as the key to happiness. So very, very interesting story there. Why is it so important that we use this technology to find out what's on these scrolls? Um, well, it's important because otherwise we, we'd have lost um, potentially, you know, very important works to history. Um, there's simply no other way to visualise them. Scientists have tried other techniques like infrared photography, but this has damaged the scrolls further. And, and visually, there's simply no other way to look at them. Um, so it's very interesting. And, and this method has also been applied to the works of Aristotle, for example, to, to recover lost writing there. Now on to another topic, a key geological date in the modern era, July 16, is it, 1945? That's right, and, and for geologists that's about as specific as you can get because geologists generally work on timescales of millennia, so they're very excited about this. Um, this story is exciting for several reasons. Firstly because um, for many years, ever since Paul Kurtzen, a, a Nobel Prize winning geologist, um, proposed the idea of a novel geological epoch due to human activity on the Earth called the Anthropocene. Scientists have disagreed over when we should agree this started and also how to identify it. So for generations to come, how will they know when the Anthropocene started? And what we need is effect, in effect um, something called the golden spike. So geologists look for, um, if you like, a, a, a fail-safe identifier in the stratigraphy of the Earth to identify. And we think we've found it. And, and that, that smoking gun, if you like, is um, radionuclides. So 16th of July 1945 was the first nuclear test and there have been a whole swathe of them since then. And so um, what's going to happen now is, is a team of 26 scientists have, have achieved consensus on this and will go to Davos and present this to the World Economic Forum uh, this week where of course John Key mm. will be as well. Mm. Excellent, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Steve Pointing.